support our coverage with a free account on Privacy, the service that keeps you protected when shopping online. Get $5 to try it now by using promo code QZZ2J. All right, we're going to invite our next guest up, and it's Rutkar VJ from Autonomy Incorporated. So tell us about your project yeah. or, your, or your product, excuse me. Yeah, hi. So it's it's wonderful to be here. First of all, uh, thanks Geek News uh, Central. All right. So uh, we are providing contactless deliveries using autonomous robots, and uh, we started last year. And uh, right now, we are the world's first to do autonomous deliveries at airports, and we are live at uh, CVT International Airport, uh, Cincinnati. So if you haven't uh, happen to travel to Cincinnati, you can always you know order online, and the food will be delivered to you at your departure gate by these robots. Oh, that's interesting. So you order your food; it's prepared wherever you've ordered it from. They put it in a robot, and it rolls to your gate and delivers it to your gate. Absolutely. The most important thing is that these robots are completely autonomous from day one. Mm -hmm. So there's no teleoperation; it's fully autonomous, and uh, we can do both indoor and outdoor uh, you know navigation uh, with the same tech stack. So I'm kind of curious when they're uh, autonomous from the very beginning. Obviously, there's some pre-planning that has to go into place, mapping and all that. Do you have additional support for the robots when they're driving? Do they have sensors where they show that they're on, they're on track or they're, you know, what is, how do they know where they are? So uh, it's it's a very interesting question. So uh, we do not uh, require any infrastructural change into the overall system. We um, move the robot once in the particular setting, and uh, it maps it and localizes within that. Now the interesting thing is uh, we use both 3D lidars and multiple bunch of cameras to uh, create a geometric and uh, contextual map of the entire environment. So it doesn't really matter whether we are indoors or outdoors. We we localize and navigate within that particular map. So <coughs> that's how it is. Most of the delivery robotics companies, they use GPS as a reference point for their positioning. Sure. We don't use that. And that's the reason we are, why we are the only ones to do both indoor and outdoor autonomous navigation seamlessly. So how much, you know, whenever I hear about this, though, there has to be some, you say you drive it once, but if I'm going to get food from McDonald's to gate 17, you got to know where McDonald's is at. Absolutely. So we map the whole, uh, you know, airport once, yeah. and uh, once the concourse or the particular terminal is mapped, we know where where things are. So we. So then it's tied into an. I'm assuming an app. Who? What app are you actually utilizing to facilitate the food ordering, delivery, and location? So that's an interesting thing because uh, we partner with the, you know app providers like ordering ordering apps and also POS systems. So currently at CVG International Airport, we have partnered with Crave Up app, which is uh, based out of LA. And uh, for a couple of other restaurants uh, automating their curbside deliveries, we have uh, partnered with Presto, which is a technology company recently got, uh, you know, listed using a SPAC, a SPAC uh, you know, instrument. Right. So when the robot is making the delivery, I'm assuming the, end, the person put the order in has some sort of passcode to put in to get it into the device to get his delivery, or does it know... Yeah, this is the person I'm delivering to and open up automatically. So, you know, uh, right, uh, you know, the company was born in the midst of pandemic, so we wanted no touch. Sure. So, you know, putting up a PIN code is a touch thing, yeah, right? Yeah. So, uh, when a person place, places an order, there's a unique order ID which is generated. We generate a QR code based on that, and that QR code stays with the staff okay. and the customer. I got you. So, staff uses that, uh, you know, QR code uh, scanning to put the items in, and the customer uses the QR code for you know retrieving their items. So they don't have to touch anything. How many deliveries can the robot, is it just one to one, or can they do one to many with the robot? So we have two compartments, two separate compartments, and two specific doors uh, on the robot itself. So two deliveries uh, per trip is something which uh, we can do at this point. So in your test case out of, or not test case, but this usage out of Cleveland then, what have you seen the usage rate be? Are, are people using it quite a bit or? It is increasing. So we had, uh, you know, we are live since last uh, 25, 30 days now. Uh -huh. And uh, it's uh, almost 400, uh, or, you know, or deliveries already done. Yep. So usage is picking up. And the interesting thing is, uh, you know, uh, different type of users, like uh, different persona of people. Uh, are uh, using uh, using the app order and they are so excited to get things done, you know, right. delivered by a robot. So, oftentimes airports can be pretty crazy. 
You know, I've run from gates to gates. The last thing I want to do is run over a robot. So how, how do you, I'm sure there's a flag or something. How do you keep the robot from interfering with normal traffic in the airport? So there are a lot of robotic companies which are like uh, small robots below your knee. Yeah. So there's always a risk of tipping over. Sure. And uh, apart from running, people are engaged on their phones. Yeah. So that's also a risk. So our robots are up to the waist height of a oh, regular person. Okay. So they're higher. Yeah. And that's where the capacity is also larger. So uh, you can't miss out these robots. And at the same time, robot has a uh, you know, big front screen and uh, you know, uh, part of verbal and non-verbal communication. So if uh, you're obstructing the path for you know for the robot, it is going to you know talk to you. Yeah. So that's that's how the contextual information is used to autonomously navigate. So what happens if someone has their suitcase parked there, two or three? Does it navigate around the suitcase, or does it ask you to move the suitcase? It navigates around the suitcase. Okay, yeah. awesome. So it's pretty interesting. So how's the reaction? I'm just kind of curious how the general public's reaction is to this. So uh, general public is really excited. So you know, uh, uh, different type of users, even kids up to like uh, six to seven years old, you know, they they love taking out things uh, out of the robot, and uh, you know, the usage is increasing. So 400 orders, like in last 20, 25 days, sure. it's a good number. Yeah. And uh, Im- interestingly, the app usage is uh, you know whether people are ordering or not. That is something which is different. But our core focus is to deliver 100%. The number of orders received should be delivered. So that's something which is 100% autonomous, 100% delivered, and uh, so far so good. Well, that's awesome. Uh, Autonomy.io, with an O, autonomy. Um, What's the future here? Uh, I'm sure you're here at the show trying to garner up some business. What's the reaction, Ben? So interestingly, you know, we, we are uh, automating the curbside deliveries uh, apart from the airports, which is bringing the items from inside the store to the parking lots. Awesome. So it is kind of reinventing or, re, uh, you know, uh, giving a fresh look to the drive through experience yeah. where people don't have to queue up while ordering. They can order online and st- sit in the car and uh, the robots will get the items from. Uh, you know, point A to point B. And that is very, very important at this point in time because uh, the labor shortage is like yep. killing it uh, in the States right now. So um, uh, restaurants are, uh, you know, actually welcoming such kind of, uh, you know, any technology which saves uh, one extra labor. So. You know, I, I think it's in my town, I live in a small town and uh, the fast food restaurants are decimated. They can't get help, but yet they have huge backup lines. People, w- you know, the, basically the order's put in, they, it's not ready by the time you get to the window. So they're queuing people and then they're having staff walk back and forth, walk back and forth, walk back and forth. And I, probably they walk 10 miles a day back and forth. What is the speed? How fast does the robot, because then, you know, is it moving at one mile per hour? Is it moving two? Do you have that flexibility to set that rate of speed? So it uh, you know, decides automatically based on the context. Now, if it is like wide open, it can go up to five to 10 miles per hour. Okay. But if it is too crowded, it, it kind of slows down so that it uh, you know, doesn't uh, affect people around. So, sure, sure, you know, sure. So, so that is the contextual navigation which we use to uh, moderate the speed and the behavior of the robots. But if they had a dedicated robot lane, the robot could move pretty quickly then. That's true. That's but true. Uh, our intent is not to change anything in infrastructure because uh, why we are focusing on airports and curbside is because no regulation sure. is on top of that. So we can scale nationwide compared to last mile delivery on the sidewalks or on roads, which is still like, you know, the nationwide regulations are still yet to come yeah. uh, in maybe two to three years. Right. All right. Awesome. Well, there you go, folks. Autonomy Inc. And is it autonomy.io? I'm looking at your uh, your shirt. That's a brand name, autonomy.io. And that's a website as well. So you can uh, know more about autonomy at autonomy.io. Okay, it's O-T-T-O-N-O-M-Y dot I-O. So thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing. Exciting stuff. And you go through Cleveland, make sure you get the app. And I would. I don't fly through Cleveland, but if I did, I would do it just for the novelty to try it. Yeah, we should be, uh, you know, awarded for, you know, Cincinnati t- tourism because we are asking people to fly down to Cincinnati to experience the robots. Yeah. So <laughs> what you need to do is have it here so we can order food and have it delivered because we don't get to leave and get to eat. So it should be here at CES. So <laughs> next year CES, we'll have a couple of robots right there. Oh, steady. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. TPN CES 2022 coverage is executive produced by Michelle Mendez. Technical directors are Kurt Corliss and Adam Barker. Associate producers are Nancy Ertz and Maurice McCoy. Interviews are edited by Joe Minnie, 
Hosts are Marlo Anderson, Todd Cochran, Scott Ertz, Christopher Jordan, Danielle Mendez, and Alante Sparks. Las Vegas studio provided by HC Productions. Remote studio provided by Plug Hits Productions. This has been a Tech Podcast Network production. Copyright 2022.